falling on the city of Providence, Rhode Island, and on the regular season of the Big East. And here inside the Dunkin' Donuts Center, the home team, maybe the hottest team in the conference, trying to keep it rolling for the finale against the Demons of DePaul. Hi, everyone. Alongside Ben Parisi, Scott Graham, glad to be here with you. In this last day of the regular season, Ben, we have already seen a lot of moving about where teams might be or are going to be when they get to Madison Square Garden. And if all of that action today wasn't enough, the seeding for next week at MSG is still not complete. Well, you take a look at it, and this DePaul team right now would be facing Marquette, but that could change based upon what happens in our final game. And we also know right now that Providence is locked in to face Butler in the 4-5 game coming up in the quarterfinals. Starting lineups are sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee, and Juan Kipkins, one of the hottest players that you're going to find anywhere right now. Alpha Diallo celebrating senior night as well. The name you see missing, Paul Reed for DePaul. He is not starting, and it doesn't appear he is going to play once again tonight for the third straight game. And that is a big-time loss for DePaul. They are used to that. Recently, we'll get into that more life without Paul Reed, especially when you have to battle Ed Cooley's physicality and size. Blue Demons of the Friars have already met once this year. James Breeding, John Gafty, Brent Hampton are the officials. First meeting came right down to the wire in Chicago. Crowd is standing. This is a full building here tonight on senior night. And they will stand here at the dunk until the first made field goal for the Friars. Diallo can't get him to sit down just yet. <laughs> ball in the hands of Charlie Moore, where it will be for most of the night if all is well for DePaul. That's Romeo Weems, a freshman. Jalen Butts inside. Couldn't get it on the rim. It goes back down the other way. Providence coming off a win against Xavier here on Wednesday. They've shown they can play a couple of different ways. They can play smash mouth and ugly it up, but they also put up 80 points and shot 41% from three here on Wednesday. No doubt about it. The multitude of styles is a factor, but this arena is a factor. The dunk has been electric. That's Watson. Look at his way inside. Take a seat, everyone. And it might be spring break and the students might be gone, but you would not know it the way Ed Cooley's team has been playing these last couple of weeks. And with all of those seniors that got honored just a few minutes ago, this place is rocking. There's a lot to be excited about, even more. That one's going to count for two for Alpha Diallo. Not known as a transition in a running team, but one thing about the Friars is they go to the next octane when they are here at the dunk. They will push the pace, get out and run. A lot more comfortable at home in that department. Moore catch and shoot on a three, and he got it. Charlie Moore only hits 31% from beyond the arc, but a rhythm jumper right there to get the ball on the board. His shooting can be streaky in both good and bad, and with no Paul Reed tonight on the interior, Dave Lado will take that perimeter touch all he can. Upside defense nearly took it away, but not taking anything away from Pipkins right now. He is as hot as any player in the country. No doubt about it. Well said. Two shots at it. Don't fall. And then you got contact and a foul call coming. It's going to be on Diallo, his first. So to the line now for Jalen Butts, junior out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Just 57% from the free throw line. Oh, yeah. Started and played in 29 games, 14 games in double figures for Butts. He's averaging 10 points and five boards. One More thing... Pressure falls to him with Paul Reed out. Yeah, sorry, partner. Absolutely. You took the words right out of my mouth. And Dave Lato said today he is one of those key components that if they were to play without Reed, they didn't know. Reed gave it a shot at the afternoon shoot-around that 
is going to have to bring it at both ends of the floor in a big time way. Now, we were surprised to see him wearing sweats over on the side as his team was warming up. He gave it a shot. He had a full lather cooking at the shooter end, but obviously in a lot of pain. Great look inside, but Watson still can't clean it up, and the rebound finally cleared by Darius Hall. Five Royal Blue jerseys on the inside. They're going to have to gang rebound. That's a team effort boxing the Flyers out tonight. Great ball movement by Moore, but Weems can't hit from the outside. There's Pipkins. If that goes, oh, I'll tell you what. <laughs> when you get to the point where he is right now, confidence-wise, anything's possible. And see, it starts with the closeout on the perimeter because Pipkins off the bounce and from deep behind the three-point arc has been unconscious the last couple of weeks. So you come up, the defender bites. It just gives him the ability because he's so crafty when the ball's in his hands off the bounce to make you pay. He generally does not miss from the free throw line, leading the Big East in free throw percentage. So a bear of the mayor, he's got five of Providence's seven. And David Duke is all over Weems away from the ball. Check that. Providence has nine. I just shorted them two. Down inside, he was hiding along the baseline, and it was there, and Butts there for the putback. That was great action. That's when the ball's half-court offense is at its best, when there's multiple ball screens for Charlie Moore, and he's getting his teammates involved. Ball off the hands of Nate Watson. It'll go back the other way. And Watson going to take an early seat. Well, Nate Watson's going to take a seat, but the senior, Khalif Young, to a rousing ovation 20 to 25 minutes ago for senior day. Ed Cooley told us earlier today he has been huge in these last few weeks of us playing. And they're going to get another foul call. This one will be back down along the baseline. It's going to come on A.J. Reeves, his first and the team's second. Well, these three officials, Brent Hampton, Gaffney, and James Breeding, especially Breeding, they are not afraid to call the game tight. You better be solid defensively. Look at his way inside. Jalen Butts showed good recognition. Take that dive down the lane. He gets the ball back with it, too. Well, the key is, as you mentioned, the dive down the lane. That was a game speed big time cut on the slip by the big. A lot of bigs take that for granted when they roll off the ball screen and go half speed. You gotta move like a guard if you want to get in there. Diallo into the lane. Alpha Diallo playing his final home game here as a senior. He's got four here early. And uses his body to protect the basketball and shield the defender as good as anyone in the league. Coleman Lance can't hit from three. Duke oh. might have gotten away with an extra step. But he did. <laughs> He'll take it. Providence by six. Looked like a hair more than a Euro step. Straight down the lane. Nobody picked up Darius Hall. Well, Ed Cooley is hot right now on the sidelines because it was about two or three missed assignments with his help side defense. No white jerseys in the paint to bottle him up. This Providence team has been playing some tremendous defense. That's Reeves. Missed just about everything. Ball down to the hands of Coleman Lance. That's a shot not into the flow of the offense. No rhythm. Forced. Rushed. Moore. Right over the top of Diallo. Couldn't get it to sit. Now back the other way. It hasn't been pretty, but Providence carving out a six-point lead. You want to be aggressive offensively, but there's a fine line between forcing the issue and not reading the defense and let good shots come to you. That's what the Friars are battling right now. Whoa, Hall backed his way in. Apparently, he hit Duke and nobody who was carrying a whistle saw it. That's normally called the charge. Young can't get the putback.
They'll take it. A.J. Reeves from beyond the arc. That's a high percentage look for Reeves. Feet set, ball reversal, and enough air space. That's a heck of a move by Charlie Moore. Hey, he's not going to blow you away with his athleticism, but he can be deceivingly quick and change speeds in a big-time way. Just a really savvy basketball player. Yep. Sees the court incredibly. That's Duke. Missed it on the catch and shoot. It goes out of bounds. Last touching to Paul. It'll stay Providence's way when we come back. Well, he's forcing the issue early. But A.J. Reeves then let the offense come to him. And Ed Cooley will take plenty of those tonight. Brad Cherokee. And here at the dunk in Providence. Friars. Their way out to a seven-point lead. It's a team that has kind of set the world ablaze, turning their season around by not only getting wins, but getting wins against some very impressive competition. How about five in a row against ranked teams? Well, the journey of this team, this has been more, one of the more unique paths to most likely the NCAA tournament these last three to four months for Ed Cooley's gang. They had very, very tough losses early the non-conference portion they had some bumps in the road at times in january and then the way this team has been playing from about the first week of february on pipkins and company ed cooley knew how to push all the right buttons and his veterans stepped up big time second time in friars history they've done this villanova was the last one they slayed last saturday that game in philadelphia was a fist fight. 58-54 the final. Shot clock running down toward 10. Now it's five. Young's got to get rid of it. Just before the buzzer, Khalid Young. He's had the outside touch for the big man. But this year, he's added high degrees of difficulty to some of those makes. Off the backdoor cut. Looked like it would be there briefly. Now you got a rugby scrub. And the held ball on the possession arrow will belong to DePaul. Ed Cooley, ninth season as the head coach at Providence. 15th head coach in Providence history. And he has got his team about to go to an eighth consecutive postseason tournament. I tell you, it's remarkable. About three weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago, right around the time of the Super Bowl, just before, they were shown for the play-in, one of the play-in games Wednesday night of the Big East tournament. And now, looking at the fourth seed. Crowd disagrees with the call. White was moving. Yeah. There was body contact, but those, those feet were shuffling sideways. Freshman Oscar Lopez, who's gotten a reasonable amount of time this year for DePaul. Oftentimes, he was not on the floor at the same time with Charlie Moore. He was the guy who was given Moore a little bit of a break. How about that? Yeah, but he's got teammates standing. And Diallo stayed right there with him. Shot clock down at four. And a shove, and Duke is going to get called for the foul. Boxing out on the rebound. And that's not going to make the officials any more popular in this building. Nope. But again, you want to see it? He had him full yeah. forearm shove. And here's the thing. David Duke did a good job moving his feet and getting his body in between and being in a defensive rebounding position. You can't extend those arms up high. Well, it's going back the other way now anyway. Listen, there's not a fan in the Big East that likes the officials and agree. You know that, Scott. Of course. But we, <laughs> this league has as many Final Four level referees as any conference in the country. Second stint for Dave Leto. He's with the ball from 2002 through... 
2005 before going to Virginia for three seasons. That's Diallo for three. Inside position for Emmett Hope, and White drains it. You would think it would always be layups and high percentage looks. The three-point shot can burn you off offensive rebounds more than anything. Williams can't hit the putback. The Paul's in a danger zone here right now. They are. You this game could get away from them quickly. You better stop the bleeding. That's one way to do it. Challenge the shooter. And now Moore challenging the defense to get back. Great look. Oh, what a pretty pass. Stay in constant movement because Mr. Moore will find you. He leads the Big East in assists for a reason. open for a catch and shoot he hit the deck he swore he was fouled the officials disagree it's another spectacular move and dish by Charlie Moore and as he put on a show right now in terms of dishing the rock just run and fill the lane every time now if you're the Blue Demons but if all did respond with a couple of hoops and a couple of stops after Providence was lengthening the lead. And now we're going to get another call going back the other way. Well, they started off this one, Scott, trying to beat the Friars in the half court. Now Charlie Moore says, let me turn up this gas pedal a little bit, get out and run, get my teammates involved. And it has been pretty unselfish play. Now for Providence is eight points, but it was as big as a 12-point lead not all that long ago. Check into the huddle with Ed Cooley. Together, they just won that four-minute We got to do a better job. We got to do a better job. You know, it's just interesting. A couple of minutes ago. Scott, you referred to, they're in the danger zone right now. And we said they better stop the bleeding. That's how you do it, what Ed Cooley's referring to. You say, listen, you're not going to get it all back at once. You don't start launching from three. You don't start gambling defensively. You take each four-minute segment as its own mini game, And then next thing you know, at halftime, you have a shot. As we said, the first time these teams played, it came down to a made free throw by Nate Watson late. In what was a one-point game, but that was before Providence started to find its stride. It was also a game in which Paul Reed played for DePaul and put up 24 points and 15 boards. And Charlie Moore has found his stride, and they need to keep that going. We haven't even played 10 minutes yet. He has four assists. He is facilitating for his teammates in a big-time way. How about his teammate facilitating for him, but it got partially blocked. That was a great look from Jalen Butts. Nice little X and Owen by Dave Lado on the clipboard right out of the huddle. And Cooley wants his team to continue to move the ball. Work for the shot. Watson's working hard, and he draws contact. It's going to send him to the free throw line. You love Watson's strength and his footwork and his ability to just create and carve out that real estate down low. But there comes a point where he's either got to spit it back out or make that move quicker because now there's two, three, four blue jerseys converging there. That's when you don't want it to be a detriment. You want to keep that mindset cooking, but got to be smart along that baseline. That's two on Butts, so Jalen Butts will have to take a seat. Watson shoots at just 54% on the year from the line. Ten-point lead. Just about the halfway point of this first half. And now, once again, the pressure. And Moore got it right back again from Duke. That is not going to be a held ball. They're going to call foul. believe they're calling more for diving on top of Duke and not on top of the ball. Here's the deflection. Great hands by Duke. 
That's not your foul call. Your foul call's coming right here. Well, that's a good call. Yep. Now you picked that up live right away. You know what? That, that's you used to that NFL action. Yep. You don't miss anything live. Used to seeing a lot of hitting. <laughs> that's right. That's a football type play. Pipkins with the ball in his hands. Well, almost not in his hand. Finds Diallo inside, and that's another foul call. Roman Land's going to get called for this one, and Diallo's going to the free throw line. She thought Alpha was going to use the basket as a shield and go reverse here up on the other side. Good job of Pipkins over top. So Diallo, the senior, out of New York. 63% from the line for the year. One thing about Dave Lado's club, even without Reed, when you talk about Weems, Hall, his front line, these guys are active defensively. He's got former football players on his roster. They're not afraid of the physicality inside. Six for Diallo in the lead, back up to 12, matching the biggest for Providence here in the first half. Their highest percentage looks have been off dribble penetration and making the extra pass, not settling for contested jumpers. That look inside by Weems, a little late on the bounce pass. Oh, nice. That was gorgeous, everything but the basket. That pass fake shifted all five blue jerseys. That ball last touch Providence, and then DePaul out of bounds. It looked like it was going to be off Providence, but it hit Weems while he was out of bounds. And it's going to go back the Friars' way. Ooh. Well, that ball hit, it hit the ground before it hit his foot, right? Yeah, I think, yeah, that did not hit it on the fly. That should have been out the other way. It did hit the foot. Teams are actively really trying to get the ball inside. And I got to get a reach and foul in the backcourt. They're calling his tight as Nate Watson is called for the personal. His first. This is this pressure that Ed Cooley likes. Not so much to gamble for all out traps, but to make you use. An extra 10 to 12 seconds of the shot clock that you don't want to use. As nearly another takeaway. All knocked out of bounds off of Providence. It'll stay to Paul's way. And Dave Lado was ordered the, all the way out on the floor at that point. Yeah. He wanted to know where the call was coming right there because of all the bodies that were on top of one another. Oh, that, that was close. And that just shows you if that ball doesn't go out of bounds, you're down to 17 seconds before they could get organized. So that token pressure paying dividends. Shot clock is down to five now. No choice but to go up with it. And that's going to be a shot clock violation. And Genda didn't realize that the shot clock was all the way down to two. Shot never made it to the rim anyway because of the defensive fell. Friars with a 12-point lead. Despite the fact that they're not shooting especially well. Okay, a haul is on Pipkins like a glove. There goes Pipkins. Shot clock at three. Oh. There's nothing more Hall could have done. That's on Duke. It'll be his second. Why, you think it's hard to shoot the ball from the baseline <laughs> over the top of the backboard? Is that, we playing horse? Uh, let me tell you something. When you hear analysts and you hear coaches talk about being crafty with the basketball, this is what they mean. How do you get this off, Mr. Pipkins? 
14. Friars enjoying their largest lead of the first half here on senior night. We got an opportunity to see a parade of seniors come out and give the head coach a hug, bring their families, be cheered by this crowd. It's always a terrific and emotional ceremony. Oh, one of the longer ones that the dunk. How about the veterans that the amount of minutes and experience Ed Cooley says goodbye to this year. And I'll tell you what, his relationships with his players, when you see those embraces, we see lots of them. You can't replicate that. You can't fake that. And a very emotional pregame ceremony for him along with the families. And then you got about seven or eight minutes to get yourself <laughs> back focused and in front of a sellout crowd. Well, everybody who's ever played the game and has participated in one of those senior days will say the exact same thing, which is it's emotional. There's a, you know, there's an emotional drain that's coming out of you with your family around you. And then, oh, by the way, let's play ball. Well, and it's always fascinating when you talk to both coaching staffs because earlier today at the shoot-arounds, Dave Lado's like, I'm concerned about their energy coming out in the first half for senior day today. And then you talk to Ed Cooley. An hour later, I'm concerned about how we're going to come out for senior day today. Are we going to be too emotional or is it going to be a big letdown? So, you know, the psychology of this ceremony could go either way. Proves two things. Coaches are always concerned about something. And yep. coaches are never really, truly happy. <laughs> That's a good point. And they have happy moments. <laughs> A nice cut. And the foul on Weems is going to send A.J. Reeves to the free throw line. Well, you talk to other Big East coaches, and Ed Cooley will draw up difficult actions as well as anyone in the huddle when he's exiting and Owen, and that time lifting all of the bigs to the high post and then a hard back cut off of it. A nice delivery to Reeves. Reeves hits him at 68% on the year. Big 22-point game on 6 of 8 three-point shooting. And the win over Creighton back on February 5th. Part of that run that Providence put out there. Six points for him in this one and a 13-point lead for the home team. It's that 1-2-2 two, two, three-quarter court again. Now they match back into a man-to-man, -man, and now look, Moore's not organized until 17 seconds. Pipkin swatting it from behind. And Moore couldn't get it to fall. The follow wouldn't go either. It's probably an ill-advised pass. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Pipkins just steps in and picks Weems' pocket. Reeves in rhythm. That is Reeves' bread and butter as Dave Lado wants to talk it over. He is as good as any perimeter in the league doing that. Sprinting up the sideline, catching the three in transition. 16-point lead for Providence. Remains hot in terms of defensive pressure, trying to push the pace. They've held the ball without a field goal in the last four and a half minutes, and they've grown this lead now to the biggest one so far in the game. They do not hesitate to push the pace in transition, especially when they are here at the dunk, and that involves the wings up along the sideline spotting up as well. Great anticipation by Diallo, but he couldn't quite save it. But the Paul is not making the simple pass now. They're doing the, the hard parts taken care of. They're getting it past half court. Now when the basketball leaves Charlie Moore's hands, make the simple pass and get into your offense. They're trying felt to make the home run pass a few times. Very, very long skip passes. Nice. There you go. I'll tell you what. He just sees the floor exactly the right way. Not just the open man, DJ Williams, but how to get the bounce pass to him. Yeah. And he didn't telegraph at that time. Eyeballs were to the right. Pocket pass went straight. Young inside. That's going to be a blocking foul. And it will be on Charlie Moore. That's his second. I would have given the little guy the benefit of the doubt there. 
Here's what? Charlie Moore's size, and you look, look at him asking him. And Khalif Young runs me over. 5'11", 180, <laughs> standing in to take it from 6'9", 250. I'll tell you, Ed Cooley loves this senior here, the big fella Young, the lefty. He said he has been an absolute beast and has been a leader for us on and off the floor since we've been super hot these last couple of weeks. Young's got three, the lead at 15 now as we come up on six minutes left to go in the half. And that's going to be a hold on Reeves. His second. Val's piling up a little bit here in this first half. But the Paul's going to have to pass fake. They're going to have to... Take off of Charlie Moore's lead in terms of not being afraid to be aggressive and facilitate for others. Because right now they're being passive, and you can tell this three-quarter court press, Scott, that we've been calling token pressure, it's heating up. These are sharks smelling blood in the water, and it's getting more and more aggressive. And this Providence team's confidence just continues to grow each game. We were talking beforehand. Really doesn't matter who it is. There is nobody in that field at Madison Square Garden next week that wants to see this Providence team. No question. That's Villanova, as you mentioned, everyone included. Creighton, Seton Hall, not one of those teams wants to see this team right now. That's a foul call. Coleman Lance can't believe it, but Reeves is going to the free throw line. And, and here's why when you talk Providence. There's teams and there's plenty of players that they do certain areas better. But they check all the boxes if you're Providence. They have size, they have strength, they rebound the ball, they defend you. They're patient offensively and they have senior leadership. And listen, you, you could be weak in a couple of areas of the box score. You have those tools. You could be dangerous in a conference tournament. And Providence also knows what it's like to go to Madison Square Garden. These guys have been in this situation yep. before. They know what it's like to go right down to the wire for the Big East Championship. Yep. It's a battle-tested group. There is a benefit to seeing all those guys holding up jerseys on senior night, and it's that experience you're going to take with you in no the postseason. Question. No question. The rough part is when they're not here next year. <laughs> and Providence becomes a very young team for Ed Cooley. But that's next year. Reams thought about it, probably should have taken it. Seventeen point lead for Providence. The ball struggling to score points. And a lot of games this year. When does this lead get too big? It's 20. Tell you when he has multiple guys cooking from deep and feeling it. It is a heavy lift to deal with them because then they still have their post-up options. Oh goodness, this place was going to explode <laughs> if AJ Reeves hit another one. That was a heat check. Williams along the inside, back out. The call desperately needs one of these shots to fall. Dave Lato's team just cannot find the range here at all. Marius Holm checking back into the ball game. Eight for 26. That's 31% from the floor for the Blue Demons. A couple games back at Butler, they put up just 42 points, shooting 33% for the night. Tipkins dishing. Watson is fouled. Oscar Lopez draws the personal, and that means Watson's going back to the line. Now a junior. Nate Watson a couple of years back in the Big East All-Rookie team. 
The luxury that Ed Cooley has from a size factor. We know he loves to run that flex offense, which is a lot of baseline screening and interior passing to bigs. Emmett Holt, Watson, Khalif Young, Alpha Diallo posts as much as any player on the roster. They just keep coming at you on the interior of your defense. And then, as you mentioned, when you add Reeves and Pipkins hopping downtown, they're a handle. Under four to play here in the half. And Nepal right now just trying to survive this first half here in Providence. And a travel is going to give it back to the Friars, who already lead it by 21. This was supposed to be a celebration of the seniors here tonight. It's a celebration of a red-hot team. Now, Mike, things looking awfully interesting for a team that a lot of people expected to be a number one seed come tournament time. Meanwhile, you got a team that I'm not sure anybody expected to be in the tournament field a month and a half ago. And right now, Providence has played their way right into that. They're at a 7-0 run right now and enjoying their biggest lead of the night. Ed Cooley's got the inside and outside game cooking. And this is when the Friars are at their best, when perimeter shooting is supporting all of that frontline size and physicality that every opposing Big East head coach talks about when you're preparing for the Friars. We talked about four-minute games and four-minute segments, mini-games. DePaul is desperate to win this one before halftime, or the lights could get turned out on them awfully early tonight. Pipkins. Look out. That's the sixth three-pointer here in the first half for Providence. Moore can't answer. Rebound down. This game entirely in the hands of the home team right now. Okay, Pipkins moves so well without the basketball. And even when you're concentrating on him defensively, illegal screening. Think of the defender enough room there to get out of the way. He just needs half a second sometimes, it feels like, to just slither out and break free. The ball team that started the year 9-0 and 12-1 and and in non-conference play. Things have not worked as well during the Big East schedule for the Blue Demons. Under three to play here in the half. They need to make something happen here, and it's just not happening at all from the field. Diallo says, I'll handle this. Tip funnel. Credit's going to go to Nate Watson. They're just scoring in every single way possible. This is who has to step up for Dave Lado. Thank you. Coleman, Coleman Lance. Lance. Yep. He's led them in shot attempts the entire season. It's not even close. That's just his second shot attempt of the ball game. He's got five points now. That breaks a 12 to nothing Providence run. With Reed out, he has to step up in the second half offensively and be more assertive. Reeves, whoa! He wanted a foul too. Thought he got clipped on the way up, but nothing is cooling him off in this one. <laughs> 17 first half points for A.J. Reeves. Wow. He averages seven a game. On the inside, stuffed by the backboard and the rim, and now some volleyball. Out of the pack with it, Pipkins is one on four. When you're a three-point shooter, the net stats and the numbers could go out the window, and that's where Reeves is at right now, because he is red hot. And Pipkins tripped on the play. Cameron will be called for the foul at the 128 mark. A little hip check. Fans think it always has to be a reach sometimes. It does not. The hip checks are fouls too. Rob Pipkins. Graduate transfer from UMass. Came in, took a little while to get his feet set underneath him. Over the last three coming into this one, averaging almost 25 points per game. 
He would start, he would come off the bench, then he went back to starting. It coolly challenged him, leadership-wise and psychologically, to really step up and take it to another level, and he answered the call and challenged from his head coach in a big-time way. Contact, and Jalen Butts going to go to the free-throw line. Dave Lato is obviously a, a guy who has a reputation for being a very cool customer, a steady hand as a head coach. You know, the, talking with him today, he realizes telling us to put it into perspective about literally returning this entire roster for next season and it, it's going to pay dividends I mean, what's the one consistent theme when you look atop this league whether you want to talk Seton Hall or Creighton or even the, this late surge of Providence down the stretch it's been experience and guys playing together for multiple years and yes he doesn't have freshmen across the board but when you talk about newcomers whether it's transfers or young guys they have to settle in and it's nice on paper what's coming back next year in Chicago which is part of what makes it all that much more commendable for Jay Wright's team to share the Big East regular season crown starting a couple of freshmen and a sophomore so you know I, don't, I don't know how you figure out who the Big East coach of the year is this year great was preseason pick seventh in the coaches poll look at what McDermott has done within the league Diallo once again from the outside. The three quarters continue to rain down. He's got nine. Well, now the shot attempts. Now it's just easy for him. And Coleman Lance trying to answer. A quick timeout to use it or lose it for Ed Cooley with a four second differential between game and shot clock. Paul's got a lot of work to do to pull back into this one. Right now, different story back on January 4th in the game that was played in Chicago between these two teams. It was a true battle back and forth. The Friars ended up giving it up and having to come back and figure out a way to grab it late, which they did from the foul line. Came down to the closing seconds. Nate Watson hit a free throw, and that was the margin of victory for Providence. Say, that one was a thriller. That was right at the start of conference play. And you think of all the lives that the Friars have had this year because they had really tough losses early. Long Beach State, Penn. And then all of a sudden, around the holidays, they beat Texas. They beat Georgetown and then go on the road to win that Midwest swing at the Paul and Marquette. Friar Town was buzzing. And then they go lose four out of the next five. And then they get their footing again. And there's been many different themes to this season, as Ed Cooley likes to say. The theme for this first half has been they've been hitting their shots. Nice Seattle. Pass. He made great position for himself inside. Got away with the arm, perhaps. Seattle's got 11. And Moore can't get it to fall before halftime. It's a 30-point lead for the hottest team in the Big East. Who would have predicted that? But then again... It's about the theme of the Big East Conference play this season. 20 more minutes to go for Providence in the regular season. It's looking good right now here on Senior Night at the Dunn. Stick around because after the break, we'll join Mike Gale and Casey Jacobson for the Jeep Grand Cherokee Halftime Report. Fifty-five, twenty-five. Providence up big here at halftime and made reference of the first half to that one four-minute segment that Ed Cooley said his team lost. Well, they won the other 16 minutes. <laughs> they did. And inside, outside, what didn't go well for Ed Cooley's Friars, but especially the perimeter shooting. Perimeter shooting was fantastic for them in that first half. They made eight different three-pointers on the half, and they held DePaul off the board for a good chunk of the half. Leading scorers, sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. And that guy right there, A.J. Reeves, has four of the eight three-pointers so far. You put his and Pipkins or Diallo's numbers together, they've already outscored DePaul as a team. 
And Reeves really had the range. Uh, you mentioned it in the first half, Scott. He only averages seven points per game, but Reeves is one of those guys who's a much, much better shooter than his numbers indicate when he is cooking and when he has the hot hand. And he's not a three-point shooter that's going to burn you off pick and rolls or step behind ball screens. He's going to sprint up the sidelines, move without the basketball. He loves to catch in transition. And that first 20 minutes was scripted picture perfect for his ideal shot selection. Give you an idea, he missed his last shot in warm-ups right now just before the second half began, and he was incredulous that he actually missed. That's how good he <laughs> feels right now. There he is. Couldn't be more open. If you're DePaul right now, how do you go about trying to chop down this tree? I think you want the basketball in Charlie Moore's hands, and I think you want tough action to the rim, whether it's pick and rolls, but Coleman lands and the supporting cast has to step up. Oh, my God! Tip follow, count it, and a foul. That's number three on Jalen Butts. And Karam's off. And then just the crashing and the relentless pursuit of the basketball. And whether they're going live in practice, whether you're at a shoot-around and they're going through their dummy offensive sets, it's always about the front line crashing the offensive glass and cleaning it up. Clean it up. Clean it up is all you hear Ed Cooley preaching to his guys when they're working on their trade. Nate Watson now has 10, biggest lead of the game for Providence. Charlie Moore stepped back. Well, you'll take that if you're Dave Latos to say, you're not going to get it all back at once, but you've got to find secondary ways to score. Force turnovers, defense into offense. Where's Butts and company on the offensive glass? you got to... Try to find and get creative. And you're going to get another foul call. This one's going to be on Coleman Lands. If that's the case, that is four. Oh, boy. So, whew, perhaps your best offensive weapon, certainly from the outside, is taking a seat right now. And with 18.38 left to go and four fouls, you're not going to see him again anytime soon. Now, this is just that much more pressure on Charlie Moore. Paul Reed, if you joined us late, missing his third straight game. After a hip bump at Xavier. Now you're going to get a foul call against DePaul. It's on Romeo Weems. And at the beginning of the week, on Tuesday, they had a very, very impressive home win against Marquette without Paul Reed. But Charlie Moore had help in that one, and they had guys step up from deep late and make tough shots. And this is going to be a heavy lift with shorthanded roster now when you throw foul trouble into the mix. They had five players in double figures in that game earlier this week. As a tip drill briefly for Providence, they couldn't get it to fall. There's Moore. Got it. On the feed from the freshman, Oscar Lopez. Now, if you're the Blue Demons right now, you cannot, and you don't have the luxury to go against the set half-court defense each time down. you got to get some early, fast, quick ones. The ball knows they are the 10 seed. They'll find out for sure later on who they are playing. An opening round play in the Big East tournament. Duke. Oh, count it. You made up a highlight reel of Mr. David Duke this season. And you weren't showing stellar defense, getting the teammates involved, or a perimeter shot. Off the bounce, that's one of his bread and butter moves. He loves it. Left to right spin and then the soft touch at the end. Averaging 12, his career high 36 came at Creighton back in January. He's six for eight from beyond the arc in that game.
They are showing pressure here right now. Now, let's go off what you just mentioned. How scary is this? With what Providence has done these last two to three weeks in the four seed spot, that Creighton game, they're up by five with a minute and a half to go in Omaha. Think about that. How that think, would have changed things. I don't think we're the only ones thinking about that. I've got a feeling the folks at Creighton are thinking about that. The folks at Butler are thinking about that. And oh, by the way, going over Seton Hall, anybody who's That's in right. the, that top half right now has to be thinking about that. This Big East tournament in New York City next week. Oh, boy. You can literally think of any four-team combination for the Friday night semifinals. And I don't think it would surprise any coaching staff. Take a look at Moore and only player in the Big East ranked in the top 10 in all three of those categories. Got in for his 12th point in this one. As we said, really promising start to the season for DePaul. 12-1 non-conference record. Absolutely on the right track. Struggling with injury, foul trouble in this game. And in absolute honesty, they have run into a buzzsaw here. Oh. I don't know if it was better there, the entry pass, or how he carved out real estate before the delivery. Tough take to the hole by Lopez and Butts there for the putback. Ed Cooley is getting on his guys on the sidelines about defensive rebounding like it's the first two minutes of the game and we're tied. Because he's he's been through this act before to where it's about what you do between the lines and your level of play heading into the conference tournament. Not letting bad habits develop. going back the other way. Ed Cooley is still coaching hard. He's got a team on the rise. He wants to keep it that way. Dunk, it is all about the home team tonight in the final regular season game. Providence is blowing DePaul out with under 16 minutes left to go. A DePaul team, as we said, that had more than a promising start to the season. And boy, have these seasons changed for both of these teams. DePaul after that 12 and 1 non-conference start on the other side Providence was 7 and 6 coming into conference play and they have caught fire here late but the beginning of the season was a little rough for the Friars it was and you know Ed Cooley said they were still finding themselves they lost the pen at home at the dunk and then they were out west far tough long tough loss to Long Beach State lost to Charleston. These were clubs that on paper they should have comfortably beat, but all part, as Ed Cooley said, of the process of finding themselves. And, you know, a tale of two teams when you really think about it. DePaul had all of those big-time wins in November and December. They won at Iowa. They beat Minnesota. They beat Texas Tech. And then they ran into the gauntlet of this conference, which is going to send 70% of its league to the dance, whereas the Friars were the complete opposite. They had to learn about themselves the first two months and then played their best basketball when it mattered in February. Well, they probably take it right now because they are peaking at the right time. Diallo. He got a shot on the way into the basket. Looking at the officials. Saying, where's the whistle? I'll take the two, but I wanted three. So they don't like that. That Euro, that Euro step didn't work out. Now you're four on two. And a foul call. Kind of a desperation foul. On the part of Oscar Lopez, who was waiting for reinforcements to arrive. Jacobs to get his first action of the game. Freshman out of Chicago. Oh 
that's going to be a reaching foul on Butts. I'll tell you, they were he was a few inches of completely splitting that high pick and roll and maybe throwing it down. A little bit of highlight action there in the paint before the deflection. That's Butts' third. winding down and that'll be a violation and a turnover but the ball last touched Jacobs so it goes back to Providence at least on the initial call if they're going to look at a deflection or I think they have to figure out act. well here's the thing if it's the shot clock violation that's a moot point right and I think that's the, the way this is going to go the turnover happened before either one of them touched it Obviously, you know how hard it is to try to work your way back down 33, but is it also hard to play with a lead that big? It can be because what winds up happening is, is that you start looking at the scoreboard and getting a little bit more into a comfort zone, and that's where coaches are stressed the most sometimes because you don't want to get away with what's gotten you to this point and what you want to be doing in certain departments as Madison Square Garden approaches. Great hustle along the inside, and Reeves just would not quit. Not just about the three-point shot with him this evening. First points of the half, he's got 19 for the game, and Pipkins can get called for the foul on Charlie Moore, and then turns around and helps him up. We told you about the bracket now. DePaul is set to play Marquette depending upon the outcome of the game that follows this one. Butler and Providence are locked into the 4-5 game. But think about how many of those slots that if you would have told Big East fans two weeks ago that would have been the seeding, they would have told you you were nuts. And that's what we're in store for next week in the Big Apple. One of the teams you wonder about is where's the mindset right now as Duke just adds to this huge lead. What's the mindset right now to seek the hall? They won a share of the title last week. They had two games this week to take the title themselves and lost a boat. Yeah, but you know what? They haven't been shaky. You know, they've lost a couple of really, really tough battles. They have a lot of experience. They have a big-time leader in Miles Powell. They could cut down the nets as easy as anyone. And Diallo, from a really hard angle, kisses it off the glass. I think once that tournament starts next week at the world's most famous arena, you might as well just take the seating and throw it out the window, no? I think you have to. There's a takeaway. Providence has already doubled the ball up. They were sitting back in his zone look and still ended up walking out with a turnover. The question right now is not what. The question is by how much. Yep, he is such a good passing pick. Oh. Emmett Holt, the crowd favorite, gets the tip in. You know, you knew from the start they were going to be under man, but this one's not even close. Now you lose. Paul Reed, you lose a ton. You lose 15 points and 11 boards. A double-double machine. Holman Lance is an 11-point scorer. He's sitting with foul trouble. Hard to make up for that. And the communication. And they're playing a team that's red hot. That's a great job of continuing to run the floor for D.J. Williams. No doubt about it. I couldn't believe Pipkins actually saved that along the sideline. Wow. 
difficult for DePaul offensively in the half court this entire ball game. Sometimes you have those nights where just nothing goes right, and that's Dave Lato and the Blue Demons right now. On the other side, a Providence team that seems to be doing everything right at just the right time of year. That would be the month of March. There's just over 10 minutes left to go in this one, and their leader, their senior, who was honored tonight, it's no news here. He really knows how to operate around the basket. He does. And yeah, Ed Cooley's been saying for two years this is one of the most versatile players in the country when he is clicking on all cylinders. And you've seen the entire repertoire tonight from Alpha Diallo. He can post it back to the basket as good as any big in the league. Face you up, lull you to sleep sometimes, and then just that high skill level. And let's talk about how he set the tone for this resurgence. Because you think back to this Providence club. Scott, and on Wednesday, February 12th, they got their butts kicked yep. at Carnesecca against St. John's. And it was looking it was looking dull. And then all of a sudden, a couple of days later, he goes off for that 35-point career game against Seton Hall here at the dunk. And they haven't lost the game since. And they have just been red hot. And the senior put the team on his shoulders to start that run. Five for five from three-point range in that one. They had ten rebounds in that game as well. We come back to play. And it doesn't get any easier for DePaul to find the basket. Robinson's job in this case is to continue to run their sets. To bleed some clock with each possession. Selfish play. And then just rattle another three-pointer home. I was not a math major, but they're up by 38. Yep. I believe that's going to be called a hell ball. Yep. Possession arrow stays the same way. Look at ball movement. One, two, inside, outside. Three, four on the kick. Game nine three-pointers for the Friars. Yeah, Reeves is going to get called for the foul. When you talk to other Big East coaching staffs, they tell you, you know what makes going against Providence tough? Not just the bigs inside and the size. When you go against their guards on the perimeter, did you see the size difference between Charlie Moore with Reeves covering him off the bounce? It's suffocating. Look at that contest on the length. Young got hit hard in the back of the head. In what looked like it was incidental contact, but he just kind of fell off the play entirely. That made it a very easy two for Ungenda. He's coming out. Got a little elbow on the way down. Said he just kind of stopped, and that made it pretty easy for Ngenda to go in and jam that ball in. Oh. And the foul call along the inside. There, yeah, Watson is a load to handle down low, not just because of the way he carves out real estate and the way he operates with his footwork in the paint. But then when he catches it, now look at the strength of the lower body and how low he gets. That's tough when he has a defender on his back and he's in one-on-one -on -one ISO situation. One of five children, two brothers, two sisters. Out of Arlington, Virginia. Oh, two more for Watson, two more for Providence. Five and double figures.
for the Friars. And a huge lead. In the zone right now, Ed Cooley working on some different things. Are they going to make him happy about the zone? Probably not. Back-to-back -back buckets for the freshman from Ontario. You see, when you have blowouts early in the year, it's about getting guys some other minutes as guys are selling that tryout. Show me what you could do, Coach Faze. Now it's about Exit and Owen and working on some different things as the conference tournament approaches. Conference tournament that came from the old Big East to the new Big East. The tradition continues, and in, in all honesty, it's probably the best in America. Yep. Because it's Madison Square Garden, because it's New York City, because the drama factor is just turned up every single time you hit the floor. And now throw in the fact that 70% of the league is going to oh most likely be competing in the big dance, and which means that some of them more than likely will be in the East region That's trying right. to make it back to the Garden in the second weekend. And how about if you're one of these Northeast metropolitan area, New York, New Jersey, connect even a Philly, and you're talking the path Albany and then the regionals at MSG before you hit Atlanta in the final four. That is going to be a foul call. As Watson hit the deck. Ed Cooley's guys still sharing the rock. Guards getting involved, Biggs getting involved, Reeves with a nice delivery, Watson show has this one very well in hand with just over seven and a half minutes to go and as they wrap up the regular season, Providence and DePaul for that matter can both look ahead to where they are headed next. DePaul as the 10 seed right now is playing Marquette. We will wait and see if that remains that way after the game later tonight. The other game that we're focusing on here is the 4-5 game. Providence and Butler, that one is locked into the quarterfinals coming up on Thursday. These teams split with each winning on the other's home court. And I called that January 10th game against Butler, and Ed Cooley's crew then in early January, Scott, was not a cohesive unit. They got beat up on the backboards. And when February began, you see that February 1st win at Hinkle, Alpha Diallo and Pipkins came off the bench in that game. That's when he started tinkering and pushing buttons and really challenging his guys. And guess what? They win at Hinkle by four. Pipkins scored 22 off the bench. That was probably the beginning of the, turned out to be this incredible run for Pipkins. Well, I've got to imagine might be done for the night. Off the miss by Reeves. Oh well, yeah, you want to you, you want to challenge your guys and, and you want to keep a high level of, of play at both ends with your chemistry, but you also want to be smart too and not get anyone hurt for no reason. Well, then again, he may not be done for the night. Has to put a warm up jacket or a t-shirt on or anything along those lines. So we get those seniors one yeah. final bow. Yep, probably. It's a tough take to the yeah. hole by David Duke. You had to check off boxes about what went to the next level with his offensive game this year. That's one category. He's got 12. And Weems gets hit kind of inadvertently by A.J. Reeves, but the foul will count just the same. Butler and Xavier next. That is going to determine whether or not DePaul will be seeing Marquette, a team they beat earlier this week. Will they be seeing Marquette again? There's some pressure in New York next week on Marcus Howard, because now this is back-to-back -back years. Marquette has really, really struggled late February into early March to close out the season. Now the loss. At DePaul this week, a loss today, St. John's. Hey, we haven't even talked about them. Nope. You're, you're in Madison Square Garden battling against St. John's next week, where they beat West Virginia this year. Mike Anderson has a unique style of play with that press. 
their caveat is are they making shots on the perimeter? They struggle shooting the basketball at times, but no easy outs next week. Well, their first round matchup in the 8-9 game is against a Georgetown team. Huh. Patrick Ewing's got nobody left, and they took Villanova right to the wire today. Yep. Big time shot for them at home. Crowd's loving it. And you think the garden will be juiced for Coach Ewing next week? A little bit. <laughs> Familiar territory. I honestly can't wait to get there. Obviously, you have other plans when you arrive, because we haven't talked about that yet today, about me and you meeting up in New York potentially next week. Oh. We'll check in. And a reach-in foul at the 5.18 mark on Cameron. Look at that. The righty with the lefty whip pass to the right wing. And at home, what a circuitous ride. Coming back from injury. Juco transfer. An abdominal injury two years ago that ended his season. Missed the final 26 games last year. He had 12 and 6 the first time these teams played. And battle for the loose ball. Held ball stays the same way. You know what's interesting about potential matchups next week now with Creighton as the one seed? How about the table is set for potentially Villanova? in Seton Hall Friday night in the semis at MSG. <laughs> there is nothing like the Big East semifinals in New York City at Madison Square Garden. I'll tell you what, the next couple of days, all of the press is going to be McDermott and Creighton and what Jay Wright has accomplished with this young Villanova squad. You better do not stop. Listen, I don't know if psychics could predict what's going to happen next week. You better not stop talking or paying attention to Seton Hall and Kevin Willard's crew with Miles Powell. I'll tell you what, I had that game earlier this week, the Seton Hall Villanova game, and oh, it was a war. What a classic. And I'll tell you what, when you talk about Villanova, whew, when you talk about Miles Powell and Seton Hall, even Marcus Howard and Marquette, I think it's going to be easier in some ways, Scott, and I know this is going to sound crazy, but when they get to the NCAA tournament and go against defenses that do not know them inside and out, the way these biggest coaching staffs and players do. That's a good point. Reeves. And Cooley said, calm down, calm down. But you know what? You have the leeway. You have the green light. You're allowed to take that shot when you've made that many from downtown. Doesn't mean your coach has to be completely happy about it. <laughs> A trip back to the free throw line for Nate Watson. He certainly had his attempts tonight. Six out of eight from the free throw line. Help support that 16-point number on the night. All of these bigs for Ed Cooley have to be ready to roll. Because when it gets conference tournament time, you don't know how foul trouble is going to shake out. There you go. Curtain call, Todd. Emmett Holt. Duke trying to figure out if anybody's going to stop him from doing that. Is that 45 points for the lead? Is my math correct? Your math is correct. Wow. Hitting the century mark right now for Providence is probably inevitable. I don't know if I've seen a 45-point lead in a conference game. Crowd 
cheering for Andrew Fox. Oh, they want it. And Lopez uncontested for the rebound. <laughs> the ball fell right in the Fonts' lap. He still gets the cheer like he just won the national championship. This is a delicate balance because Ed Cooley wants his team to be unselfish, not run up the score and use the shot clock, but he realizes what this crowd wants in terms of the walk-ons as well. Of course. There it is. Ooh, the lid was coming off this building if that shot went. It was well in the... Uh, they play. That would have been the loudest. Boy, nothing comes easy for the ball tonight. You said just one of those nights. Timeout call for it. Make another substitution. Here's Vons. Gets credited with the steal. The little deflection. And his teammate Duke puts it down. Lamar Baldwin and company waiting for the end of this one. It is just 2.47 away. And Baldwin, third among active career scoring leaders in the Big East behind those big two and Howard and Powell. Baldwin actually still has an opportunity to crack 2,000 points before all is said and done in his college career. And yet another stellar veteran in this league who we didn't, didn't even get a chance to talk about earlier. But think about the stretches and the success. Butler has had at so many points this season to where Baldwin just put that team on his shoulders. Guess what? It's all seniors on the floor right now. Is that for curtain call purposes or is that to finish it out? I think it's the curtain call. You would think, right? Yep. I think Ed Cooley has a plan here. I think his plan might be to leave him on the floor to end it. You think? I don't see anybody sitting by the scorer's table, do you? Well, it's an interesting move for the walk-ons to come in, make that appearance, and then go out. That's why you got to think he might have something planned with the crowd. He's yep. just taking a shot clock violation. Well, he's got a plan. And that plan is for a salute on the floor. As we go to break. This is going to be America's favorite breakfast. They just I have a different take on wrapping up senior night. For Ed Cooley, we got to the timeout. Seniors all came off the floor to a thunderous ovation. And Alpha Diallo. That was nice. One final goodbye to the home floor. Hey, sometimes coaches take them out one by one. That worked perfectly with all five to get that standing ovation from this sellout tonight at the dunk. Well done. Well, the crowd loved every bit of how that tribute took place here right before the timeout. And now they got 209 left to go. All left to be determined is the final score. Providence, their 19th victory of the year. Play well, nice, is, boys. Play nice. There is something else that can be determined, which is why you hear the volume right now. Ah, forget it. It's a moot point. If the opponent misses two consecutive free throws, there's a free Chick-fil-A sandwich. But you need a ticket stub, so that wouldn't even help yeah, me. It's not going to help you and me. No. Okay, correct. So I don't care. I was trying to tee it up, and of course the broadcaster's jinx. He goes two for two. Well, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> it's not going to help us. Actually, there's chicken and waffles in the press room for dinner before the game. So that was a, that was a new touch at the dunk. I haven't seen that one before. Fonts. Opportunity there, but he went penetration yep. and then he started to go to the post up game like one of the Villanova guards. <laughs> <laughs> Chick 
channeling his inner Jalen Brunson. Ball knocked over the end line off the ball. 93 seconds left to go. Nick Sullivan will get some time for DePaul here in the closing seconds. Just won't happen, will it? Lopez still playing hard and technically sound with that bounce pass down to the cutter from the baseline. He's part of that strong freshman class that they've laid those brought in that just needs to get experience underneath their belts. As you said, in theory, they will have potentially everybody back. Now, by the way, you think there's any pressure on Mick Sullivan here right now? This oh. crowd going berserk wow. for a chicken sandwich? They can taste it. They got it. One of the loudest points of the evening. Yeah, I would say senior tribute with the aloe <laughs> kiss the floor, followed by the chicken sandwich. <laughs> Thing that is true or will be in 50 seconds no providence team has ever won 12 big east games in a season three other years and this one providence has won 11 games inside the conference this will be their 12th the first for this program and jacob's very slow to get up you don't want to see that 44 seconds left and a blowout You hope that's not serious for Marquise Jacobs, but it looks like it might be. He just banged on the floor as if he had a an idea that he knows that that's not something that's going to easily walk off. Look out! Oh! <laughs> He couldn't do that again if he tried a thousand times. Nope. <laughs> that facial expression right there was, all right, I gave it my best shot. I don't think they're going to shoot it again. Nope. I fully signaled no shot. And if you're talking about senior night, this could go as bad as... Well as expected if you're Ed Cooley and the Friars. Still clicking on all cylinders. Team chemistry at an all-time high. Beware this team in Madison Square Garden next week. A huge win at home to wrap up the regular season for Providence. Their 19th victory, their 12th Big East win, most in school history for the Providence Friars. So once again, your bracket looks this way. Providence has Butler. That is guaranteed. We will find out if DePaul is indeed playing Marquette in first round play at Madison Square Garden on Wednesday. It begins with the 8-9 game, Georgetown at St. John's, and it ends with all kinds of madness. Our final score, 93-55. Providence up next on FS1. The Big East regular season concludes with Butler visiting Xavier. For Ben Parisi, I'm Scott Graham. Now let's rejoin